coming to you from the Desert Botanical Garden here at the JW Marriott. Where are we? Desert Ridge. <laughs> Desert Ridge in Scottsdale, Phoenix, whatever. Um, we just finished up day one of Unlock the Secrets and it has been amazing so far. What are you thinking, Ray Jean? It was awesome. Like, overwhelming. So much, so much good stuff. <laughs> this is your first time at a more private Russell Brunson event and are you enjoying it? Yes, definitely. Didn't get hypnotized, also glad with that. <laughs> and that was weird. So we'll get to that there because that was kind of the end of the day. We watched a hypnotist show and yeah, that was interesting. So share those experiences. But like, first off, I'm just gonna walk you through the day because it's been pretty dang amazing. I'll try to get more footage tomorrow, like B-roll footage and whatnot. But like we started the day early this morning. It is what, like nine o'clock at night right now? Yeah, yeah, it's like nine o'clock at night. We started around 8.30. Yeah, I think doors opened at 8.30. It, door, doors op doors were supposed to open at 8.30. So key to a Russell Brunson event, doors never open on time. <laughs> but you don't want to be late because you want to network and you want to get close to the doors in case there's a rush. Um, biggest difference I found this morning between Funnel Hacking Live and here was that there really wasn't a sprint through the doors that I saw, which probably had something to do with small children and people pushing strollers. <laughs> They're Less even, like, telling rush. people to like slow it down because like at funnel hacking live we were all geared up and everybody's ready and like you had you almost had a designated runner for your team <laughs> for however many people you're saving like i was saving seats for cheerio and for regine and if regine picked up anybody else i would save seats for them because <laughs> she's an extrovert who picks up people if you guys ever meet me in person you probably think well it's like wow no i'm not <laughs> I did pick up someone for dinner. <laughs> you did. You've been picking up people all day. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> and I, but I'm the one who's like, we have extra seats in the car if they want to come for dinner. But I don't talk to people very well. <laughs> Besides your gene. But so introverts, like key, if you're an introvert like me, that I know none of you actually believe I am an introvert, like hang on to an extrovert when you come to events and just follow them around like glue, like Velcro to their hips and follow them around. Maybe bring them snacks occasionally as thank you. And back rubs, is always work. Right? You got back rubs. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One of my skills is beginner massage, so. Um, but that has nothing to do with today. <laughs> So we get in the room this morning and they had these fantastic um, workbooks for us. So like full on level, I'm gonna smack myself in the face, workbooks and really, really cool. So the day started with Russell going over, um, what did we do in the very beginning? <laughs> the, the monkey brain and the elephant yeah, brain. Yeah, we did like a little bit like the secrets of success. And it's so cool um, because I, I don't know if you find this cool or not, but like we heard Russell talk about secrets of success a little bit in Funnel Hacking Live, uh, 21. Can't wait to see what it's going to do in 22. And then in Mexico, we did a whole midnight mastermind. We did like six hours where he was talking secrets of success and more than that. That's where the eulogy story came from that made me cry. <laughs> I actually have that on a video if you guys want to check it out. I think it's up, I'll link it up here if you want to see like my story of stuff that happened in Mexico and writing your own eulogy is a powerful emotional thing if you let it be. So that was that. But then today Russell came in and he was really talking about um, the different parts of the brain and their functions and the things to um, like how to work with them. So really neat, fascinating. Um, he talked about in the front of the brain, like who's heard the term monkey brain before? Like I've heard that, but I didn't really understand what it meant. I just thought it was like your distractions and like, what was the videos I watched? They're like, okay, if you're squirrel. feeling the, the, exactly squirrel and distractions, <laughs> like just focus on your breath and come back to center. Or you got that annoying song stuck in the back of your head and whatnot, like come back to center and all of that. Um, that's not what Russell was talking about. So he was talking about like emotion and logic and um, how those are the things that drive us forward and that make us want things and make us kind of go after our dreams. So I thought that was really cool. Right. And then the whole, the main part, the, your habits, that was your elephant brain. Yes. And how like the elephant brain just wants to keep going and keep going. And the monkeys are like, no, we want to go this way. Come on. And the <laughs> elephant's like, Psh, I'm going, I'm going with my <laughs> habits. This is what I do. <laughs> your habits, your routines, so like if you're stuck in things that you don't like doing or things you don't like about yourself a little bit, like, so it's probably just the habits. It's that elephant, that subconscious. And what was it? The monkeys were the conscious brain, right? Right. Monkeys were conscious brain, elephant, subconscious. And then at the back of your brain is the, uh, he called it the lizard brain. 
And I have definitely heard that term before. Lizard brain, limbic brain, caveman brain, all that stuff. Um, was that the ego? The ego is no, part what, of it. The ego is part of it, is what it protects. But I forget what the part of the brain is called. I don't remember. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, this morning was a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, but the thing with lizard brain is that that's all the stuff driving it like supposed to be protection. And the things uh, that you are valid to be protected from, like fears of falling and maybe spiders, I don't know <laughs> if that's loud a valid noises. fear or not. <laughs> loud noises. I'm the person who goes towards the loud noises, so that one doesn't really work on me. <laughs> like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> investigate <laughs> <laughs> whoops <laughs> that part's broken um so those are like valid fears most of the time and then the non-valid fears the ones kind of we tell ourselves about ourselves things like i'm not enough things like i can't get on camera things like no one's gonna listen to my youtube channel or watch me ever um i don't know if you want to share any of like ones that come to your head right away <laughs> I don't know, somebody talked about like not having enough time or you know, just not being good enough, you're not interesting enough, you're not anything enough. And that was really interesting. So the the monkey brain is like, I don't know, do we want to do this? Do we? It's like a question and the mm -hmm. elephant brain, which is kind of like a statement and I don't know. It was just more I, I love what he said with lizard brain. And of course he brought a Star Wars reference into it, which of course made it that I will always remember it. <laughs> but the monkeys are always questioning things. And the lizard brain speaks in absolutes, like only the Sith speak in absolutes. So you throw an Obi-Wan Kenobi quote in there, I am good to go. And if that's not Obi-Wan, like no one smash my bubble right here. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe you can be gentle in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's Obi-Wan Kenobi who says that only... Uh, only a Sith speak in absolutes. So it's like, oh, if, if, you, if you're a Star Wars fan, be like, Sith brain, shut up. <laughs> My lightsaber is not red today. I don't have a lightsaber uh. with me. <laughs> but yeah, that whole part was really fascinating. And then from there, he went into the, the personality types. So the mm -hmm. disc and the 16 personalities. Yep, or... speak a little bit louder. Oh, just make sure you're balanced. <laughs> so he talks about the Sith. And, or the Sith. Now we'll see what he did to me. <laughs> I guess. We talked about the disc, disc personalities and the 16 personalities, disc profile, 16 personalities, um, and I think that's all I re we, we took some others, but those are the two we that he really talked mm -hmm. about, and it was just really interesting to like tie it all together. Yes. Yep, and he, I loved it. He was talking about, and he was, um, because of course, it's movie stuff, so I want to remember it, but he was kind of connecting um, the different personality types or uh, personality superpowers with different like Avengers and whatnot, and it was just, oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> it's always interesting to me to see that those personality tests that people are like, oh, this one is good or this one is bad, when that's not the case at all. They're mm -hmm. just different, and yeah. just because we have something different than somebody else, it doesn't make it better or worse, it's just different and I think mm -hmm. we're so much better if we can just embrace what we have instead of go oh I'm not like that person that's your lizard brain right there mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I'm not good enough because I'm not like that person and that person and that's the standard I'm going to judge myself by and since I'm not like that person I'm not even going to try that's lizard brain <laughs> those were every single one absolutes <laughs> yep, exactly <laughs> whereas you want to think in questions I'll be like oh how could I do that if I was to be awesome like what would I do? How would I be awesome? <laughs> or should I do this? Or should I do that? But yep. Yes. Exactly. So that was really cool. So that's how kind of Russell um, ended it a little bit. I admit that I was a little bit teensy bit distracted as he was pulling up this stuff because I was like, oh shit, I didn't take. I'm so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lizard print absolute right there. I'm not going to say I'm so pathetic. Um, missed opportunity. Usually I take pictures of my computer screen <laughs> so I have the stuff with me whatever I'm working on and I didn't take pictures. I did screenshots but that didn't help when my computer was dying and then I was trying to get my computer up to get to those screenshots. I'm like oh shoot what were my profiles and everything while Russell's talking and my computer decided it wanted to run updates. I was like <laughs> damn you tech. <laughs> Yes, yes, we both have had computers this week that just don't really like us. Um, but yeah, so that was part one of the day. And the first person, like, Russell just knocked it out of the park. He even had stuffed animals. I saw the kid is still walking around. He had an elephant that's like five feet tall that he brought around. He just sat it next to a kid, and that kid's been carrying it around all day. <laughs> I feel bad for the parents that may or may not need to buy an extra plane seat, <laughs> get an extra car seat, like, 
strap it to the top of the car. I don't know. <laughs> Mail it home. I don't know how that thing's going to fit in a box. <laughs> how, how squishy it is. <laughs> <laughs> Giant elephant. <laughs> um, so yeah, and from Russell, it went to Allison was next, right? Yep. yep. And coming in talking about um, products. No, it wasn't Allison next. It was uh, the Stevensons who talked about eBay oh, and right, um, right. flipping. Flea mar from flea to flip, flea market flippers, whatever. They were really good. They were a lot of fun just to like an opening eyes about opportunities that there truly is. People think all the time that I need a product, I need a unique product. You don't. You, there's tons of stuff. And if you have a desire to make money, you will find the way to do it just with the stuff around you. So that was kind of my big takeaway from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, just some of the deals they had from like, they just told people, hey, we're the, the, where's this is the thing we're doing. If you see something on the side of the road or if you have something you want to get rid of and you don't want to deal with selling it yourself, they, people would just give them stuff and then they would go and turn it around and sell it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace and make sometimes lots of money. Yeah. Like $8,500 for a soft serve ice cream machine. Yep. Was like, that was pretty good. Um, I'm still a little bit jealous over that princess carriage bed. That princess that carriage bed. That was an awesome bed. Right? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I had a canopy bed as a kid because I was that spoiled princess stuff. Yes. Um, okay, moving right along. <laughs> After them, we had Allison Prince come on, and she just completely rocked the house with um, products and e-com. And Allison is the queen of e-com, um, but she came in and she was talking about like using your regular office printer to do physical prints of stuff, and why having that is so much better than a digital print business. Um, profit margins and all of that great stuff. She was talking about all these people who just like take trash and just with a teensy bit of reworking and polishing were able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it was definitely inspiring, mm -hmm. especially on the handmade community. And um, I think it was Allison. I don't know if you caught this, Ray Jean, but she was like, stop waiting for your epic brand. Just get started. And I know with maybe you watching this channel or a lot of the people that we deal with that I want to help, we tend as makers to get stuck in that rut of, I need the perfect business name. I need the perfect logo. I need the perfect brand colors. I need the perfect fonts. When whatever is sitting on your screen is good enough to start. You can always edit branding later um, because you're not gonna get that divine lightning of what you want to do, what you wanna stand for, the business you wanna have until you're already running and working on that business. It goes with that whole publishing every day. It's like, as you publish, <laughs> that's how you find your voice. So as you start selling, it's like you can only learn about stuff to, to a certain extent. And then until you put your boots on the ground and start working, that's when you really figure out how it all actually works. So you have to take it out of that theoretical to practical. Because we can read all the books we want. We can watch all the... Well, no, keep watching my YouTube videos. I'm giving you the inspiration, okay? Um, we can watch all the other people's YouTube videos you want. You can listen to all the podcasts you want, all the audio books, take all the courses you want. Uh, but it's still, like, learning is not power. We got this one. I don't know if it's a Tony, if it's a Russell. I heard Stacy say it first. Um, but I think it's a Tony. That knowledge is not power applied knowledge is power. So it's not until, again, you're actually doing that you have anything. If you've taken a million courses and not done a single thing, it's the equivalent of never taking a single course. So we want you to watch the video, but then we want you to go and do it. We then want do you it. to apply some, something that you learned. Which goes beautifully right into the following speaker who was so great that I didn't take any notes. Um, I was just absolutely captivated by him. Colton Brames? Was that his name? I think so. I think it was Colton Brames. And I got pictures, but they're on the phone that I'm recording on. So like, meh, sorry guys. Um, but he's like 18 <laughs> and so confident. So like ridiculous. It was the first time he ever spoken on stage and you would never, ever believe it. This kid is a pro. He was so just like, whatever on stage and just, oh my God, the confidence oozed out of this kid. <coughs> and um, he resells shoes. And so he started by flipping and reselling shoes, and now he has a course, and it was what, Reselling Secrets? 
You'll always know a Russell Brunson follower if there's secrets in the title. Like, I have trunk show secrets, <laughs> which might switch out to live selling secrets. I don't know. <laughs> it's a work in progress right there. Of course it exists. If you guys want to know about it, like, comment below. Let me know. I'm all about selling um, your physical products on Facebook Lives, Instagram Lives, YouTube Lives, all that cool stuff. Um, but we're not talking about that right now. But this kid, Colton, <laughs> had a... Uh, what was it? He did a launch and he had like $200,000 on this launch. Is that it? Like what? <laughs> this is what I want for Teddy. This is what I want for like any of us who have children, nieces, nephews, all of that. Like I want us to be like guide them and inspire them and yes, let them do even better than we do. Just so we can come back and trounce them later, but give them a fighting chance. So, but seriously, this kid was so good. I was just captivated watching him that I didn't take any notes. And I like, I always feel bad about that. Cause it's one of those, let me know if you're like this too, pickle peep, where someone really good is on stage. I'm just like, I don't want to look away. I don't even want to look down at the paper cause I can't write as fast as they're talking. And this is just amazing. I don't want to miss a second of it. And then afterwards you're like, shit, I wish I wrote stuff down. Um, but his biggest thing that he talked about, which comes beautifully off of Alice's, what we were just talking about before, was he was, I guess he's a big Top Gun fan. I've never seen the movie Top Gun, but whatever. Um, and it was Don't Think, Just Do. <laughs> I think that's from the new movie. Is it from the new movie? I think so. I have friends who want me to go see the new movie, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, don't think, just do. And like so much of that, because we get stuck up here. We get stuck. It's like, oh, um, maybe we get stuck in how to do it, which this channel is here to help you with that. Um, we get stuck in that my business name is not right. My colors aren't right. I don't have the right logo. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I haven't had my grand vision yet. My product's not perfect yet. And we just get stuck in all of this thinking stuff right here and we want to like shut that down and just move forward take action and do like that was the big theme of the day I feel definitely yeah all right so after Colton <laughs> we had Russell came back right yeah. and we did hook story offer <laughs> which is just so much fun it's like one of the foundations to click funnels and to uh, Russell's training methods here and sales methods is hook story offer if you guys want to know more about that maybe we'll do a series in the future about hook story offer um, I know Regine and I have been focusing and really on this trip we've been on a challenge working on hooks and stories right yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love how for the offers part, he had a bunch of kids come up with their product and had them build offers out of their products mm -hmm. so just to really move beyond being a commodity to actually having a full-fledged offer. Okay. So we threw a couple words out there and I just want to clarify super duper quick, like not going deep on this, but a commodity is a product that you can buy anywhere. So a book is a commodity. A movie is a commodity. Um, a skateboard is a commodity. Um, anything you can buy on Amazon is a commodity. <laughs> you can buy it on Amazon, you can buy it at Walmart, you can buy it at Target, you can buy it at Kohl's, like wherever. It's, if you can buy it multiple places, that's a commodity. Um, and you are, if you are in that market, you are competing on price. And the only way to really increase value off of that is to just decrease the price. That's how you win, right? Who does like, who has the Capital One shopping tool that I refuse to put on my computer. I don't know why. Um, that's like, oh, we'll scrounge the internet to find you the best deal on it. That's a commodity. Versus an offer, as Russell teaches it here, and as we have been studying, that's one of the first things we've studied in One Funnel Away, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's how we um, really started becoming good friends, was through the One Funnel Away challenge. Right. And um, so... An offer that instead versus a commodity is where you still have the thing, but you're going to add more to it. It's what makes you special. It's what makes you distinctive from Amazon, Walmart, Kohl's, Target, Sam's Club, Winco, whatever. <laughs> I'm trying here. I appreciate that. <laughs> Winco is beautiful. It's like Aldi's and Sam's Club had a baby. It's gorgeous. I love Winco. <laughs> I don't know how it compares to Wegmans, but yeah. <laughs> away from grocery stores now, but, <laughs> um, so layering on things. So things you could have, if you have a physical product, like a lot of what we teach on here, maybe you have a digital component that you add onto it. Maybe you have an instruction sheet. Maybe you have PDFs that go with it. Maybe you have a guarantee. Maybe you have a certificate of authenticity. Maybe like there's a whole bunch of things you can add on. Maybe you have extreme amazing packaging um, and you're going all about doing an extreme unboxing experience. More on that later. Um, <laughs> I keep teasing. It is coming. <laughs> um, so many amazing things that you can add in. Um, 
that make the an offer and that make your product the go-to product, even if it's the same thing everybody else sells, the stuff that you kind of bundle with it together is what makes it interesting, what makes it more valuable. So that's like commodities versus offers right there. And it was so cool. He had like, what, eight kids up there? It was a lot of kids. It was a lot of kids, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yep. Plus, like, it's just so much fun. I don't know if you think it's as entertaining as I do. Um, they have this soft cube thing that's the microphone, and they have a couple of them. And Russell will just, like, launch it across the room, and the kids will catch it. People will try to catch it. He was launching Twinkies across the room this morning, too. Like, that was awesome. I don't know if you saw it. Like, okay. <laughs> this is the crazy stuff I pay attention to. But one person, because I knew who, like, tried to catch the Twinkie, and it went right through his fingers, laid it on the ground, and the person was in the um, chairs behind him, caught it with his feet and drug it right under the table. So he had the, he had the Twinkie. <laughs> it was Misha. Poor Misha. Um, <laughs> missed out on the Brunson Twinkie. <laughs> so many horses that shouldn't go together. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that was, um, that was a lot of today. Then we went out, we did a fantastic dinner, going out to dinner with different people. We learned about um, hypnosis. We learned about um, marketing, Facebook ads and Google, Google ads, ads and yeah. YouTube ads. And it was really cool. So shout outs to Caroline, to Michael, to Terry, to Lori, 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 to, I don't know Michael's wife's name. Sorry. Um, I'm really bad with names too. So anyway, um, so we did all of that. That was awesome. And we came back and then the night ended with um, a hypnotist show. And I don't know about you, like I walked into that room excited and petrified at the same time. Because I, my only experience with hypnosis has been like at Renaissance fairs. That's where they make you cook like a chicken, talk like an alien, do all of the weird wonky things that just embarrass the shit out of you. And I'm like, eh, and I know I'm an easily susceptible person. So I'm like, eh. <laughs> what do you think walking into the room? Oh yeah, I didn't want to be on that stage. I'm like, wait, how did we end up so close to the stage? We did. That was the goal to we were be what? at the back. We were what, four rows away from the front <laughs> stage and there was like wide open space for you and they could look straight at us. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, we were gonna be back. That's how I got such a clear um, photo for what's on the cover of this image. Like, yeah. <laughs> I did. I got that specifically to be the background of the YouTube cover today there you go. and tomorrow and the day after. But <laughs> day one. Um, but the show was cool. So I personally don't find hypnosis like I don't find the show entertaining. Like, yeah, it's it can be funny, but it's just like really interesting to see it and to watch. And so he was doing the whole thing, like watch the follow the palm, follow my palm. And I'm like, there's kind of a sunspot. So this is kind of hard. And, but going behind somebody's head. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, this is, uh, I'm interrupted here. <laughs> and he was doing like the sleep and you're going to get heavy and blah. And I'm like, if it happens, it happens. Cool. If it doesn't, it does. It's like, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? I end up on stage and on camera with Russell Brunson and stuff. Like what's really bad about that? <laughs> something cool to talk about later on it's like yeah I was hypnotized after he said he wasn't gonna make us cook like a chicken or talk like an alien or do he said like it was that was reassuring when he said he didn't believe in entertainment at the cost of someone else yes right <laughs> yes so that was like okay um but he did that and I don't know about you but like he was doing it I was following I was like okay this is kind of cool this is kind of cool and he's like follow because of the sound of voice voice and then he had us take deep breaths and on the last deep breath he goes breathe out and I'm like this and I'm like I can't breathe <laughs> And just I'm listening to him, but I'm also focusing on my breath. And I felt really weird, but I didn't relaxed. actually go under. I did not feel relaxed. I felt really heavy, but like I wanted to be twitchy. I want I wasn't twitchy, but I wanted to be oh, twitchy. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I feel weird. <laughs> you didn't. Okay. I, didn't. I was totally open to it, but I guess not really. So anyway. He brought the people up on stage, and it was cool. It was fun. Um, I'm excited for him to come back and talk tomorrow morning. I like the ideas about changing your mindset to be mm -hmm. successful and, like, really using the strategies or those tools and understanding how your brain works so that you can kind of get past a lot of those negative stories that you tell yourself so that you can get success. And so much of it is, like, we don't realize what we're thinking on a day-to-day -day basis. It takes a higher level. It takes work to be aware of your thoughts, to be aware and be like, wait a second, I'm slipping into a negative spiral. Wait a second, I'm responding to this from fear. Wait a second, why do I think this? And, like, 
it takes a long time. Let me know in the comments below if you're able to think like that at all, because like that's advanced thinking. And um, it's one of the big things that they try to teach here. They teach it with the momentum coaches and everything else. And we've been talking a lot about it this whole trip long um, about like those fears and these stories you tell yourself for why you can or can't do something. And it's like one of my favorite quotes of all time is the Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. <laughs> so if we just consistently work on the, yes, I think I can. Yes, I think I will. Yes, I think I am. <laughs> And I am statements and all that stuff, we're gonna get so much further than it, responding from that fear basis. And I agree. So, yes. All right. Oh, that's a long recap. We're 25 minutes here. <laughs> so, Reggie, any final thoughts here on day one of Unlock the Secrets? Woo! Woo! Like, I'm bummed there's only one shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be wearing it tomorrow. <laughs> No, I'm so excited for tomorrow and what we're going to learn. And mm -hmm. uh, Zach, the hypnotist, is going to be back sharing. And I don't know, yes. I'm just excited to see what comes next. Right? Um, I think, oh God, Caleb Maddox speaks tomorrow, oh, I think. Right. Tomorrow or Saturday. And I'm so excited to hear him speak. And just to see, like, all of the people who are. And Russell makes it a point to bring people up who are really young and are crushing it. Because there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Age is not an excuse. Gender is not an excuse. Size is not an excuse. Time availability is not an excuse. Resources are not an excuse for why you're not succeeding. It's all up here. It's where it all is. It's right here. And it's the decisions we make every day. So, like, he had us, uh, one of the, exam the exercises he had us do that I promised we be done um, <laughs> yeah, and she promises, I know, I'm really bad at that, that my disc profile showed I'm really bad at that, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but one of the exercises he had us do was to, like, what are the habits you need to develop to be a successful person, to get towards whatever your goal is, and, like, that was hard, did you have a tough time with that, because I did, yeah, I did too. Like, especially habits. I was like, okay, well, I need to do a checklist is more what I had in mind. And it's like, oh, well, that's not a habit. That's a checklist, you know? So yeah, definitely is like, okay, what are habits that actually keep you moving forward instead of it's not a one and done thing. Mm -hmm. You got to keep, keep, keep on keeping on. Yep. And it's like the other part of it is like, you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know the habits that you don't know exist. So like I can look at it as like, but I can only base it off of my experience. So like, what are things that I need, habits I want to be more successful? Like back to getting up at 5 a.m. and getting that early morning win in. To me, that's really important. Um, that sets the tone of my day to be winning versus sleeping. Um, <laughs> right here, this right here is a success habit. Being here on YouTube, showing up for you guys, bringing you guys cool stuff. That's a success habit. Um, what else did I put on there? Like being better at social and email. That's a success habit. So more, mine is definitely about like, what are the things that should be done every day or every week? And like, I am all about consistency goals. Like Regina is great at target goals. I'm really good at consistency goals. <laughs> all right. Okay. And I think we're going to fall asleep. So we got to get this video up. <laughs> so we will be back tomorrow for our recount of day two of Unlock the Secrets. And until then, I'm Melissa Pickle. I'm Ray Jean Roberts. <laughs> I have a last name. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have an epic day while you're building your epic businesses. Bye. Bye. Shh. Blooper reel or after time. There are bunny rabbits around us. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it. I don't know if I can get it for you guys. They're putting up with us being Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. There's the bunny rabbit. Look at that bunny rabbit in the desert. Cool.